Good evening everybody and welcome to PSR TV's presentation of GRC's Touring Car Season 8. You're here on your regular Monday night evening fix of Sim Racing here with Ultranet Network's Division 1 Championship. We're here today for round 6 here at Thruxton, the very first time that we're here for GRC. Joining me today in the commentary booth is Marco. Good evening Marco. Good evening, Simon. Um, yeah, very first time here, I believe, uh, indeed, for uh, GRC. Uh, I hope we will be see seeing some uh, exciting racing again. Uh, half NASCAR track here, so it might be some interesting racing here today. Yeah, I think so. We're just moving forward to the qualifying session, so we'll get to see a quick nose about on this track, if you've not known it before. Um, Actually, a couple of things for this, uh, this evening's race. Because it's such a high-speed nature and there's very little braking opportunity um, around this track, we've got... Um, you only really brake about twice. Uh, the races have been extended slightly. The sprint race is going to be an extra 10 kilom kilometres. I get my teeth in, Simon. Longer. And the feature race is going to be 20 kilometres longer, just purely because otherwise we'd all be finished after about 10 minutes. And uh, we're just going to be starting off for qualifying now, and we shall get you a little look around around the circuit. Also, a very last-minute update, because everyone was so busy trying to gain all the time in the final little club chicane, um, we've had to install anti-cut measurements, which I think could well play a very major part in today's race. Yes, indeed, because everyone, like, uh, I think everyone has trained on the non-anti-cut uh, thingy, and, uh, well, the problem is the guys now know that they cannot cut there, so they're going to be a bit unsure about that corner if they haven't trained well today. So, uh, it will be depending on that anti-cut uh, that's replaced there, how hard it is and how hard you get punished for it. Absolutely, let's take a quick look out on track there. I'm watching P7 currently at the moment. It's Scott Giuliano, and he's having to work his tyres very hard down the streets in order to get temperature into them nice and quickly. The lap's kind of over in about 75 seconds here because most of it is at full throttle on the straight. Now you can see those massive curbs. It's like Sim Racing's version of my humps, I suppose, as Giuliano crosses the start-finish line round into turn one, which reminds me very much of actually um, Silverstone, and then out onto the back straight, and then into this next co uh, little collection of corners through the first one then into Cobbs which is your middle one and then coming out on to uh, Seagrave down the back straight then that's kind of it for the very tight corners and then you're around uh, the back sections of Noble there and then good uh, to follow on oh yes and there you can see not really much for the driver to do it's more like pointing and aiming the car around and just making sure um, we're taking the most efficient line possible and then down into these last couple of corners here is where I think we'll see a lot of carnage where we're going to be coming up to the club chicane Scott Giuliano is going to probably be the first man across the line to set a time and let's see what he does and what he makes of these massive curbs smacking over each one barely scraping through across the line has got Giuliano posts provisional pole position of a 114.641 and that's actually quite quick um, today yes and as, as you said someone uh, when you have to, when on this track when you uh, you have to very precise be very precise on the steering to be fast so, uh, although uh, these guys if if you uh, steer a little bit too late or too early in church, it could compromise your whole lap in the gravel trap or in the grass. So it uh, might be uh, needing to... Uh, it's either losing a lot of time or, or winning a lot of time there. Definitely is. Currently, uh, let's take a look and see who is out on track at the moment. Simon Mellowish down in P21 is about the only man I can see who's actually out on a hot lap currently. Um, strangely, Scott Giuliano and R.P. McMurphy have just been disqualified, so I don't quite know what they've been up to, but they've certainly been up to it. Daniel Beck, currently our pole position man, Simon Mellowish making a meal out of that final chicane, just about hanging on for dear life. 
like some kind of roller coaster tycoon man, and he pops into P6. Currently, then, the top order is Daniel Beck in provisional pole, followed by Mark Jones second, Marcos Rodriguez is third, Michael Murphy four, Martin Jones five, Simon Millerish six, and actually our admin extraordinaire Alex Sorchuk is down in seventh in his Lexus. And uh, the track's on a little bit quiet at the moment, although I can see Randu Muru um, in P11 currently at the moment, um, just gearing up for a hot lap. Uh, and even Iglesias is out and about as well, as I can see. As uh, Strangely enough, Simon Miller, oh, which has just I'm been disqualified actually, as well. I'm actually following Stacey Greenshaw, who's going to start his hot lap. Uh, Stacey Greenshaw, very familiar with NASCAR and IndyCar as I drive with him uh, on the Indy course. Uh, we'll see how he gets along this time, this, uh, because uh, he's pretty familiar with this, this kind of tracks up here. Yep, he's just popping across the start finish line now. He's currently in P14 in his lovely blue KR3W racing. Was looking rather spiffy in practice, I have to say. Um, also, uh, even Glazes popped into fifth position with that time, so it was a kind of softly, softly, touchy, touchly. As we watch Stacey Greenshaw, also Jack Keefley is out on track as well, so I'll keep an eye on him. And Greenshaw getting out of the way there with Martin Palm, who's making... Um, a kind of meal of the very few braking opportunities that we have around this track, although that was him on an out lap. Since Rachel at the moment uh, 0.6 behind on the first sector. 0.06, I mean. Yep, as he comes down the uh, back straight, someone's popped into pole. That's Cat Jack Keefley with a 114.705. And um, here comes Stacey Greenshaw into the final bits now. Let's see whether Stacey can actually pull out the goods when it comes to qualifying. Just four minutes remaining and just about half the field have completed their laps. So let's see what happens into club. He doth come. Easy on the curbs actually there. A nice singular line running <laughs> over onto the grass there on the exit. Pops into fifth position there, and I fear that that was all won and lost uh, yeah. by taking that a little bit too easy over those curbs and running wide on the exit. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. I guess they should actually run a uh, lot of time because we're lucky to do pretty good in the middle sector, so uh, well, yeah, I'll better look for you, but it's a long way. It's uh, 20 minutes. Martin Palm in Peepers 12 is also one of our top guys this season, and uh, he is just well, coming out of the breaking opportunities around this Thruxton circuit and is now off bound Noble and the back straights uh, for that one. So we shall look and see how he is. Currently Jack Keefley is the benchmark to beat on a 114.705. Daniel Beck and Mark Jones are the own in two Adieu racing cars, actually. Are the only other two guys sub-115s. Freddie Fuller has popped into fourth for head of Gracie Greenshaw, Marcus Rodriguez, and Glacius Michael McMurphy. Martin Jones, Pablo Martinez into 10th. I don't think he'll be particularly happy with that, but then he's got quite a lot of weight in his car. And of course, this track full of straight line speed, if you're heavy of which these cars are, of course you get weighted for the, your good results. Um, it's going to really take effect here as Martin Palm, <laughs> cling of death around the, uh, <laughs> the anti-cuts there. I think I'm going to be clenching my buttocks all race, and he pops into 5th position. Randy Murray has just been disqualified as well. I think some people must be getting a bit confused with how they um, exit their laps because that's four disqualifications. And uh, Lauren Evanesi, I don't think, will be able to complete a lap either. As here comes Jeffrey Ruskus in P17 across the line. Where does he pop into? Ooh, 13th. So definitely, I think the weights are out and about. And um, some people need would like to go on a slim fast diet. Manuel Gaxella in P16 is the other top man out and about on a hot lap. Let's see where he gets into on the grid. Ooh, oh, oh, and Gaxella there, spinning on the final turn, and that is a not a mistake you wanted to make for Emmanuel Gaxella. Gonna still. Uh, gonna still finish the line. He pops over P15, and disgusted, he is indeed Manuel Gaxella P15. But at least he's made a time. 
So who else is actually out there on a lap? Moses Rondon down in P19. Well, to say Simon, I was actually checking right now at the guards of the DQ is in the back. Uh, I suspect that if the guys press escape on lap 3 uh, on the board or lap 2 uh, after, after their hot lap, uh, they will have to pit because if they escape, they seem to get disqualified. So uh, I guess it's, that's the reason for the DQs. Uh oh, so is Ibra Ibra thank you for that, uh, Marco. But Ibrahim Patel, they're crashing his car quite heavily on the club's um, chicane on the exit, and he becomes our first victim there of the anti cuts, and he joins the list of disqualifications. So not good for him at all. So that just leaves Moses Rondon in P18 now as our last guy. And he's just done the same. Oh! smash a -roo. Bits of cars everywhere. A hint of, well, I wouldn't want to take that one. I wouldn't want to take that one back to the garage and explain that to the team boss. And um, I have a funny feeling. I said it before we started qualifying. I'm going to reiterate it now. Those little anti-cuts, I think, are going to play a very large part <laughs> in this race, which um, the track was brought to you by um, Laser Cutter, actually, who I believe is watching the broadcast. So, hello, Laser Cutter. So, let's take you down uh, the thingy -me bobs, the grid. Uh, sorry, Mark, I just talked over you there, but I shall let you talk later. Jack Keefley on pole position, then, for your sprint race with a 114.705. Um... We're going to see what's going to happen with um, the disqualified people. Daniel Beck currently second. Mark Jones third. Freddie Fuller four. Martin Palm five. Stacey Greenshaw six. Marcus Rodriguez seven. Ivan Iglesias nine. Mohamed Patel. Uh, sorry, Mohamed Patel is nine. Uh, Michael, M Michael Murphy is ten. Martin Jones eleven. Pablo Martinez twelve. Jeffrey Ruskus thirteen. Alex Sorchak 14. Emmanuel Gaxella was the only other person to actually finish a lap in 15. Ibrahim Patel, we saw crash it out, as did Moses Rondon. Um, and Randy Muru, Simon Melowish, Arpie McMurphy and Scott Giuliano are all disqualified. Although, uh, we shall see whether we're um, going to get them reinstated. So there you can see the track... Um, that we're going to be undertaking. You can see there just the uh, club chicane down in the bottom there, and that is where I think a lot of the action's going to happen. The only other corners that you've got are Campbell, where you really have to break the rest of it. You can kind of glide your car through quite nicely. As Marco was saying, very much an Indicari oval. Yeah, and actually quite funny about uh, those uh, corners with the anti cuts. Uh, there's actually a phone number behind it, behind on the back of, on the back side of the anti-cut uh, boxes. Uh, so I'm wondering if that's the actual, uh, actual phone number for the tow server or something like that. <laughs> Maybe I should ring it up and get a kebab. But Okay, we're just going to take a quick look at the driver standings, just while we get our wonderful mess sorted out. Thanks, courtesy to our wonderful cameraman extraordinaire, Gary Gray. Woo! Um, you can see it is all go at the front. Jack Keefley on two four eight, one uh, clear of Jeffrey Ruskus on two four seven, and uh, Keefley's won three of those races. Ruskus has run two, um, and Jack Keefley's only started eight of them whereas Ruskus has started 10. So Jack Keefley has put himself in prime meat position for uh, that. Manuel Gagzella is third on 2.11. Even Iglesias, Martin Palm, Eduardo Cunada, who is not actually here this uh, week, so he will be slipping down the order. Um, Stacey Greenshaw, we saw, looking quite good. Moses Rondon, not looking quite so good, despite winning a race, is down in 8th with 108 points, and he was busy in the wall. Hoi. Jorge is Cuierdo. Um Not seen him, actually. On 107, as is Nico Jokinen, who is also absent on 111. If you have a notable people that we've got um, 
up and down the field. Scott Giuliano is down in 14th with 92 points. He was looking quite good. And Daniel Beck, we saw right high up the order. He's 13th with 94. So that's all looking rather good. We'll just take a quick look as well. I'll just tell you about the team standings as well. Kraken Motorsports currently leads that with 358, ahead of KR3W Racing with five. Uh, 352, so once again very, very close at the top. DHR Simcraft, just a couple of points behind them as well with 346, and they are Mahahiles clear of 05 Motorsports in fourth with 247. Stickline TRI Espana, Digital Racing Team, Stickline Northern Ice, DHR Apex, English Racing Night Crusaders, there's lots of those cars out on track, so I don't know why they're down in ninth, and Abu Dhabi Motorsports is rounding out the top 10 of those and that's actually the only 10 teams that have scored over 100 points so far this uh, championship yeah well uh, the reason I guess that's the problem with the ERK or the English racing guys uh, is that they actually drive with different cars or maybe uh, yeah just uh, different cars or maybe some bad luck in races or something I guess that's something that's gonna be like that and ever the, co ever the commentator's curse, sorry, I should blame my nose, um, there is uh, Eduardo Quinado who's now turned up. Oh, hey. Um, and even Pons, if he can sort out his computer, will also be joining us as well. So it looks like our numbers are going to be going up, 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 up. Of course, if you like GRC, why not come and join us? We're over at www.rfgrc.co.uk. This division, of course, is sponsored by Ultranet Networks. You can come and see us next week, of course, the uh, following Monday, where you can see all the commentary team go and do their worst, and I promise not to cause any more mass pile-ups. Shush, don't tell everyone. Uh, with the photobook.co.uk Division 2 Championship next week. And um, if you're about on a Saturday as well, I believe there's a rather yummy endurance league going on, um, which I look to get my teeth into, and I believe we're racing at Limon. Um, and if you're free on a Thursday as well, we have GRC Cups um, that you can come and take part in. And I believe we're doing a little bit of a rally. So uh, all kinds of fun and games for you all to get involved with, and I thoroughly enjoy it. So, just a couple of minutes then, until the start of our wonderful sprint race. 60 60k or um, 16 laps or 20 minutes depending on which happens first I'm going to throw it all up in the air I've got a funny feeling actually that it's going to be 20 minutes before 16 laps so which is going to be good of course no aids are allowed um, the only aid that is allowed is auto clutch which thank god for me because I've run out of fingers if we try any of that everyone of course qualified that um, on their race fuel as well so not that it really matters for your feature race but it certainly does for the sprint because that is where your tactical espionage will come into play um, although I have a funny feeling that um, you're going to get some decent point hauls today if you actually survive those darn dancy cuts Yep. Or oh, as oh, my co my cameraman extraordinaire has just said in my ear, or if we, everyone survives the first lap, if that's a poke at me for last week, then rubbish. Anyway, so I just clarify, it was not a poke at you. I, it was actually I'm watching the chicane and they're all crashing at it. <laughs> oh wow. Anyway. After Thruxton, um, where are we off to? It's a little tour, tour of the world. Oh, we're off to um, Toise Rivières. Oh God, that's going to be fun. In over in Canada, yeah, well, there's lots of I actually love a track, to be honest. Uh, uh, if uh, sorry for interrupting you there, Simon. Mm -hmm. I actually love the track, Simon, because uh, you have. Uh, if if uh, Varano was GRC karting. Uh, Verano was, uh, then was, uh, GRC Auto karting then, uh, Trois Rivières could be called, like, uh, 
CRC indoor kartings. So lovely to drive there. It is, and it's a uh, lovely track. Yeah, I do, I do like it actually. I think I'll probably go much better there than um, potentially at Watkins Glen, which is our season finale. Um, because at Watkins Glen, there's barriers close to you, but you actually have to drive fast, whereas it was Riviere's, you're relatively slow. So, um, lots of people. Martin Jones actually just warning, um, warning um, to everyone behind me, I will roll at the last chicane at some point. So he's obviously putting all of his eggs in the same basket. So, um People obviously are not feeling particularly confident about this race. Um, so my advice to everyone would be to take it easy, have a chill pill, and um, chillax. Enjoy the race, and um, don't ride those curbs like your. Um, actually, I won't finish that sentence. So, just while we're waiting for the little off ski, I'd like to take a chance to worship our little sponsors. And um, the B, of course, Ultranet Networks, for our Division 1 series, for which we are humbly grateful to, with love and respect and hugs and kisses, and maybe a little front spoiler, nudging. And of course, Division 2 has our photo book. .co.uk All sent red screens to there, I guess. <laughs> oh. And I believe after all this um, season is finished as well, there is rumblings at what looks like going to be a Formula 3 series. So open-wheeled action here at GRC, which I'm thoroughly looking forward to, actually. I've grown up more myself with... Um, open wheels they're much much easier to put into a wall and lose than the ones on these cars yeah indeed and uh, they're actually quite fun to drive because they're actually the main core of they're actually the core of our factor and we all started with them they're also going with uh, improved physics and uh, just like the touring cars uh, they're just going to improve them for DRC to be able to have uh, good fun races with them, so it should be uh, good to see them on PSR TV on a competitive uh, mode. Like, uh, Hallelujah! <gasps> that man, the familiar phrase. Um, it looks as though the people who were um, disqualified for no apparent reason are being left at the back of the grid. So tough titties. We are going to go off on the formation lap. Of course, this is a standing start. Best of luck to everyone today, of course, for the Division 1 GRC Season 8 Touring Car Championship sponsored by Ultranet Networkies. And leading this round on that formation lap will be a certain Scott Giuliano. He's no stranger to the front. He's been there before and I'm sure he'll want to do that again as he leads us off on the formation lap. Alongside him is our championship protagonist, of course, Jack Keithley. Third on the grid will be Daniel Beck, alongside his Adura Racing teammate in the uh, Mark Jones, is his name. The top four, of course, are all with a BMW. Fifth on the grid, Freddie Fuller, first Cadillac, and he's an independent. Sixth on the grid is Martin Palm in Digital Racing, with uh, BMW, of course. Seventh is Daisy Greenshaw in KR3W Racing. Also another BMW. A little bit of a BMW love fest at the top. Marcus Rodriguez is currently eighth with Tom Chill Racing. He's in a Lexus, so odd one out. Ninth is Ivan Iglesias in the Cadillac for Kraken Motorsports. Tenth is Mohamed Patel for the DHR Apex. Eleventh in another BMW, and another Adura Racing is Michael Murphy, which I think is the highest I've seen him on the grid. Twelfth is Martin Jones, and he's in the Astra, the sole Astra, of course, this year, um, and doing a rather good job of it, too. Thirteenth is Pablo Martinez for Abu Dhabi Motorsports. He's in a Volvo. Thank you very much for him posting his setups everywhere. Fourteenth, uh, Simon Mellowish in the English Racing Night Templars for BMW. 
15th is Jeffrey Ruskus for 05 Motorsports. He's in a Cadillac. 16th is RP McMurphy for English Racing Knight Templars in a BMW. 17th, Alex Sorchuk for Stigline Northern Ice. 18th is Emmanuel Gaxella. I don't think we're particularly pleased with that one, but given the fact that he's got half a herd of sheep on his uh, ballast, he's, he's doing not bad. 19th is Moses Rondon, considering his little crash a in Quali. He's in a Lexus as well. Ibrahim Patel, 20th for DHR Apex in a BMW. Randy Muru, 21st in a BMW. Laurent Evanesi, 22nd for ISI Racing Team. Randy Muru, by the way, is racing for my team, Backmarker Brigade, but I've cocked it up so he doesn't get to race in a real car. Eduardo Cunada, who missed qualifying but has added on to the back of the grid, will be starting 23. And um, that is your order as they come through the final chicane and get themselves ready for the go. Yep, first lap, uh, first corner. Uh, first chicane, uh, let's hope they make it through that first chicane uh, to be first. Let's see. Here come the lights, and we are racing here at Thruxton for GRC Seven Eight, sponsored by Ultranet Networks. And look at Scott Giuliano having to defend heavily from Jack Keefley down into turn one. Daniel Beck has moved into third. Martin Jones, uh, sorry, Mark Jones is barely holding off Martin Palm for four and five, but it is as you were at the front. Giuliano leads from Keefley, Beck and Jones as they make their first breaking point and there's someone spinning I can see it in the background, it looks like Mohamed Patel has gone round, he's got re-going again and has joined on in the middle of the pack, but other than that everyone has safely made it through so Scott Giuliano then leads by six tenths of a second from Jack Keefley. Daniel Beck currently running third, and it's uh, this is where your slipstreaming skills are going to come in. And Marco's endless references. Oh, as Martin Palm has run off wide onto the grass down in fifth position, and that is going to leave him in fifth position under attack from Freddie Fuller, and Freddie Fuller goes flying through. And uh, Martin Palm trying to get back in the slipstream to have a go down into the club chicane. That's not really designed for two aside, but Marcos Rodriguez is taking no for an answer. Or he's not taking no for an answer, sorry. And he's going to argy barge his way through side by side into the chicane. Who has got the biggest kahunas? And it's Martin Palm barging Marcos Rodriguez outside and regain sixth position. That's a fantastic move there and both respectful driving by the pair of them right up onto the back now of Freddie Fuller. See they come. What's Freddie Fuller going to do? He's going to defend quite heavily. Someone is off the track. See who it is. It's uh, Mark Jones who has just re go. Oh, we can see joined in that battle there and Freddie Fuller's up to four. Palms to five. Jones down to six and has got uh, Mark Jones in sixth position free wide with Rodriguez and Inglacius and well you don't want more closer action than this and look at Jeffrey Ruskus and Stacey Greenshaw getting involved five cars jostling for the same position down the back straight it's all going to end in tears potentially down in this club chicane who's going to make it nobody knows but look at Marcos Rodriguez there making sure that no one gets through but he's been a bit too aggressive even Inglacius is going to barge into P6 with uh, and look at Stacey Greenshaw there flying up through and uh, Rodriguez comes back Greenshaw smacks Inglacius slightly are they all going to make it through no they're not Rodriguez spins Rodriguez spins down to 10 Martinez innocently taken into that one is Marcos Rodriguez out of the race? Look at the carnage and debris. No, he has kept himself going. But uh, Emmanuel Gaxella is also out, I think, in that one as well. Indeed, he is. And, uh, well, and Pablo Martinez without a front spoiler as well. As uh, Scott Giuliano is still leading. Eduardo Cunada is in the pits. I think that might have been why... Um, that was in a separate incident by the looks of things as Pablo Martinez is really struggling actually to keep on the track but yeah Eduardo Cunada down in P22 in the pits and uh, that not a good start for him at all let's take a look back up to the leaders with Scott Giuliano currently leading because he's just taken the back uh, Goodwood corner uh, quite roughly and Jack Heafley is being sucked right up onto the slipstream people would normally pay dollars to have that kind of action and look at Jack Keefley flying up 
into the chicane not able to do it Giuliano holds the line currently for now but look at Daniel Beck there getting straight into the action in third position as well top three covered by just 1.2 seconds Martin Palm is four Freddie Fuller five Greenshaw six Ruska seven Jones Rondon and Sawchuck round out the top ten your thoughts so far Marco uh, well, it's been exciting racing so far. Uh, if this goes on, there are, go there are going to be some cars uh, being heavily wounded uh, towards the uh, end of the race. Oh, massive, massive accident down in 18th position. Mohamed Patel got it all wrong in... Uh, well, no, he actually didn't get it all wrong at all. He hit uh, Evan and Glacius, a very strange incident indeed. And poor Ev Laurent Evanesi... Randu Muru, I think, was involved, and our only Astra Martin Jones too, and uh, RP McMurphy also involved in that. RP McMurphy, Martin Jones are out of the race. Evanessi is limping on, as is Mohammed Patel, and um, well, all action down the back of the field. Well, someone, what have I told you thirty seconds ago? Exactly, as uh, Daniel Beck has just dived past for second position while I was looking at all that carnage and Jack Keefley is straight on the attack again down onto the inside, much better run out of the chicane on lap 4 of 16 of this Thruxton Round 6 GRC Season 8 Touring Guard Championship Grand Prix sponsored by Ultranet Networks of course as Daniel Beck has a little nosy pose back into the corner but Jack Keefley regained that place fantastically with the perfect switcheroo and uh, you can't get better racing than that when they're switching and swapping positions left, right and centre corner after corner but uh, those two battling have managed to let Scott Giuliano pull away by an entire 1.8 seconds by the looks of it Martin Palm currently in four, Freddie Fuller in five, Stacey Greenstall is in six, Jeffrey Ruskus is in seventh position and has Mark Jones not too far behind with Moses Rondon in nine. That looking quite good. Battle for tenth place is actually looking like the hottest one on track at the moment and that is Alex Sawchuk versus Michael Murphy. And uh, Michael Murphy straight into the slipstream around the back corners. Alex Sawchuk going very, very defensive, trying to use all of his blocking prowess to stop the Adura Racing BMW to get through. And Sawchuk goes to the inside line and then goes to cover it by sticking it in the middle. McMurphy's going to have to go for the outside, but backs out of it and thinks better of it. Discretion is the better part of Valor. And he's there to hold on for another round because Sawchuck there having a bit of a clumsy exit because he's had to put himself offline to hold off Michael Mc, uh, Michael Murphy. I will call him McMurphy. It's because he's like RP. Uh, and Michael looking like he's set for another go down into the next complex, but he's just not close enough. And behind there, Ibrahim Patel, Simon Mellowish and Randy Muru are having a good little scrap with uh, even and Glacius getting in the mix as well so action kicking off left right and center so just three retirements so far Emmanuel Gaxella, RP McMurphy and Martin Jones they're your three DNFs currently at the moment uh, but let's keep a look on this battle now for 11th position. As there you can see, Ibrahim Patel is about to dive on the inside of Michael Murphy. Murphy closes the door quite definitively there and says, You ain't coming through, my friend. But Ibrahim, I've raced against him many a time before. He's a wily old fella. And um, he's got a good head on his sh very young I shoulders. Have to, I have to quite interrupt Tal, uh, Salman there because uh, Jack Keatley is momently battling, uh, holding off uh, Daniel back. Uh, for second place, so uh, might be inter interesting to follow that for second place. Uh, going through the first chicane there, uh, Daniel Beck going a little wide. I guess he's going to try and make an, ag uh, an aggressive uh, passing move or something on the last chicane. So uh, we'll need to see how that evolves. Definitely, Marco. Thank you for being my extra eyes for that one. And uh, Freddie Fuller's actually just got past Stacey Greenshaw for 5th and 6th position. They've swapped positions as well. But yeah, Daniel Beck there um, seems to be able to get up to Jack Keefley, but then doesn't seem to quite be able to pull off the move completely and seems to be wrong-footed every time he gets past. And then Jack Keefley says, Yoinkaroo, and back through he doth go. 
and look at Beck again. Down the outside, but Keithley has it covered. He's had it covered before. That's someone's wheel and front splitter in the middle, and that's uh, Lauren Evanessi's um, car remains that are left. Uh, obviously, he's been for a cremation, but he is also retired from the race. That is Lauren Evanessi um, in the ISI BMW. He's independent, of course, I think. As uh, Daniel Beck, once again, closer than ever, really, to Jack Keefley, apart from when he was ahead, of course. And um, he's pushed himself into a nice position to have a go down the uh, back straights. Just behind, Freddie Fuller, I think, is in problems because he was in ninth, or he's in ninth, showing his ninth, but um, he's not quite on the track. <laughs> well, just following his battle, I believe he is slightly heavier than uh, Daniel with his penalty weight. So uh, it's good to see that these cars still, that Keatley can still hold off in the straights uh, with that extra weight. It's pretty amazing to see that. Although now on the hairpin, on the uh, last chicane, what the... On the He's outside, through. Daniel? Oh, is he through? Is he through? Jack Keefley much, 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 much later on the brakes. Daniel Beck completely ran footed there off onto the curves in third position. And Martin Palm thinks like he can scoop up a podium slot from that one as they approach half distance. He's barging through on the inside. And Daniel Beck there was just too early on the brakes. He had the move. It was perfect. He just had to come back across again. But obviously, he's seen those anti-cuts. And look at Daniel there. He's got so much better, more straight line speed. But of course, Paul and Keefley do have those weights, as Marco was saying, as Beck rides the curves quite dramatically there. But um, it's all coming to naught when they get to the um, a actual pass there. As Martin Palm goes past Daniel Beck for third position. And my voice gives up. I do apologise, everyone. Well... Yeah, and my, my microphone is giving up, so no worries, Simon. Uh, well, uh, I have to say, though, if you have that last corner, if you have that last chicane, you have to see uh, when you normally break uh, to that corner, you actually take a line to the outside, to, through the whole, you're actually crossing the track. So if you're side by side, it's quite difficult to actually, for both cars, to actually break perfect. So might be a trouble for the guys taking over there. This is of course all becoming a rather wet dream for Scott Giuliano who has now got a 3.7 second advantage over Jack Keefley who's romping away from this battle for third between Martin Palm and Daniel Beck and they're slowly being pushed into Stacey Greenshaw who's worked her, himself clear from uh, Jeffrey Ruskus in sixth position and you can see Daniel Beck again there that's the wrong place to try and do it my friend and uh, you need to get back under the slipstream again the battle for seventh position is looking rather tasty with Moses Rondon and Mark Jones going at it hammer and tongs they're 14 seconds off the pace on lap 9 of 16 of this sprint race but uh, Rondon has just pulled out that position and um, I've got eyes going left, right and centre just to see what's going on because there's about six different battles with this slipstreaming race. Thruxton Circuit, I know these anti-cuts are causing a bit of a pain in the backside, but it does provide great slipstreaming action um, up and down the field. So Daniel Beck not close enough to Martin Palm, I don't think, in the battle for third and fourth into the chicane, so we shall leave that one. But Daniel Beck nearly going... Um, Arse over tip. Uh, battle for seventh, though, is looking tasty. Rondon and Jones. Jones has got the inside line trying to stick it down. Moses Rondon pushes across, and that was decisive. And Mark Jones there takes seventh position with gusto and ease there from Moses Rondon. Next up on his list is Jeffrey Ruskus, who you can just see glimmers of just in front. I don't think Moses Rondon's going to sit and take that one lying down though. Quick shout out to Simon Mellowish in ninth position as well. He's worked himself up into a very decent position as well from uh, further down the field. And um, yes, Um, just trying to work 
it's suddenly showing Freddie Fuller actually as our leader. I do believe that is a timing issue, and he that shall be resolved very shortly because him he's showing upside down to me. So Freddie Fuller is getting in all kinds of action. The battle um, for what is showing as tenth and eleventh, but it is really ninth. Ah, here we go. I think things are starting to correct themselves. Simon Mellowish has got Even and Glacius. They're 10 and 11. And, uh, ooh, Mellowish, they're giving a little bit of a you're not coming through block across there on Unglacius. Perfectly entitled to do. And I think that will hold. Oh, no, it won't. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That was a hard one. Uh, Whoops. We needed for them, I guess. <laughs> That was a commentator's curse, if ever I've seen one. I do apologise, Sire. But, um, oh dear. So, into the barriers and out of the race of Simon Mellowish, and that was looking rather tasty. Until well, then. That's, that's one of those one of those broken mistakes when you say oops afterwards. <laughs> Absolutely. At least um, we know the anti-cuts work, I suppose. So, um, he shall be going again, I think, for round two. So... Well, Simon, one, one, uh, one uh, serious question. How scared are you for next week? <laughs> Don't. I'm going to need a change of underwear after the sprint race. <laughs> it's not even funny. So, that brings our retirements up to five, courtesy of accident. Simon Millowish joins the scrap heap pile that is Lauren Evanessi, Martin Jones, R.P. McMurphy and Emmanuel Gaxella. And we've seen plenty of other people off in the grass and doing all kinds of lawn mowing. Um... So Scott Giuliano currently leads on lap 12 of 16. We are looking like getting all 16 laps in, actually. It's going to be very close as to which one happens first. Jack Keefley is currently in second, and there you can see he's been joined by Martin Palm, who is looking rather racy in third position. And this is going to have um, definite championship well, connotations. Whatever is happening, Freddie Fuller is having a ping of 400 till 900 uh, milliseconds which is actually quite a lot but if the guy every oh. time when, when the guy oh and he's off Jack Keefley's off Jack Keefley is off and um, that was bizarre I think um, little Mr who was that oh it was Eduardo Cunada that just pulled off to be lapped come back in a little bit too soon gave Jack Keefley a a, a nudge and Keefley goes lawn mowering has to cut the corner rejoins back in fourth position Daniel Beck's gone through as well into third and um, well that is going to cut the difference between Keefley and uh, Ruskus of course these two are two championship protagonists Keefley still ahead of Ruskus currently at the moment but what was looking like a nice tidy margin between the two is now only looking like pittance with only Stacey Greenshaw separating the pair Well, with very full spring time continued, uh, every time the guy pops his lap, uh, he jumps back up because the spring like tells the guy, like tells the server uh, that he drove that lap time at that moment. So it's pretty interesting to see what's what's going to be on uh, at the end of the race. Pablo Martinez down in 17th position has just had an issue with the anti-cuts as well. He has survived it, but um, only just, um, by actually deciding not to take the corner at all and um, cutting the final section because he was so flying off the track into the um, actual circuit barriers, not the anti-cuts. So let's try and make... Um, a bit of sense of this race as we approach the final bits as Scott Giuliano, our leader, they're nearly rolling in that um, chicane, so he's obviously pressing hard. He's got a five second advantage over Martin Palm, who's been gifted that second just when everything was looking a bit bleak for him earlier on. Daniel Beck currently running third. Jack Keefley is in four and he's got not enough time, I don't think, to really catch Beck. Stacey Greenshaw running fantastic in fifth position. Jeffrey Ruskus in sixth. Martin, uh, Mark Jones, sorry, is in seven, just behind, with Moses Rondon eight. <coughs> Even and Glacius is nine. And Freddie Fuller is currently showing tenth. Oh no, he's not. Now Ibrahim Patel is. Randy Muru is currently showing eleven. Alex Sorchuk is moving into twelve, with Michael Murphy thirteen. Freddie Fuller. Uh, Marcos Rodriguez, and in a lap down, we've got Eduardo Cunada, Pablo Martinez, and Mohamed Patel is still running, um, desperately trying not to crash into the anti cuts. So, yep. um, the guys not making it are uh, Simon Malowish, 
Lauren Devenis, uh, Martin Jones, and Rip uh, R.P. McMurphy, and Emmanuel Gagzella. Uh, I do have to uh, get a hang on that uh, R.P., I guess. As long as it's not R.I.P., although that's probably what his car's doing currently at the moment. So, it looks as though we are heading into the final lap, and Scott Giuliano has done himself very proud indeed he was able to hold off the advances of Jack Keefley early on and from then was able to keep his head cool while there was busy lots of battles going on behind he's been pushing very very hard indeed shows no sign of letting up at all especially because his most recent lap lap 15 is just 0.031 seconds off his fastest lap of the race so obviously Slow down and save yourself for the win is not a language that Scott Giuliano actually knows. And it's been a fantastic race for him. Not his first win, I believe. He has had one before. But um, this is going to be... Oh, no, he's not had one before. Sorry, he has led a race before, but he's not won one. Um, I do remember that race as well. But Scott Giuliano coming round into the final corners. The 100% complete marker comes up and here he comes. ISI Racing Team. Scott Giuliano wins. There you go. He's a happy man. Wins the sprint race here at GRC Season 8 at Thruxton. And uh, what an excellent result that was as well. Pole position, race win, possibly fastest lap. Not entirely sure. But um, a class result for him. Second goes to Martin Palm and that was a good recovery drive from him from what was uh, competitively down the order. Daniel Beck there in excellent third position actually for a duo at racing. Not s he's always someone that's around the top ten but that's definitely the first time that I've seen him really attacking for a win um, and comfortably on the podium. Jack Keefley fourth position. Very well done with all that extra moose that he's got attached to his car. Stacey Greenshaw which is Marco's tip for the day. Good run for Stacey in fifth. Yep, indeed. As for an Oscar guy, he should be familiar with this. So I guess he done very well with this. I, yeah, he did, he did very well. Uh, congratulations to him. Because he's probably trading three leagues at uh, two leagues at this moment. <laughs> Jeffrey Ruskus in sixth position would have lost a slight points at, uh, points gap to Jack Keefley, although it is pittance in the long scheme of things. Mark Jones came home seventh in the second of the Adieu cars, so um, good time out there for Adieu actually, because they've got a couple of people with the points. Moses Rondon, eighth position, Ethan and Glacius, ninth, and uh, Ibrahim Patel there in for DHR Apex rounding out the top ten. I think he'll be happy with that. Randy Maru, eleventh for essentially back marker brigades. Well done, Randy. You've impressed your team boss. Uh, Michael, McM uh, Michael McMurphy. I do apologise. Michael Murphy in the third of your racing car. Came home 12th. Just 33 seconds down. Second ahead of Alex Sorchuk. Who was 13th. Who's actually been bottom of the pile surprisingly. Ahead of Marcus Rodriguez. Freddie Fuller. Eduardo Cunada. And Pablo Martinez was the last finisher. Mohamed Patel binned it on the last lap. So um, that was not a good end to his day at all. So that's the end of the sprinty race. Just got a couple of minutes. Got a couple of minutes gap before we get away for qualifying for our feature race. Of course, these two Division One races sponsored by Ultranet Networks. Hug, hug, par, par. And you're watching this, of course, on PSR TV, the home of sim racing, and the feature race. Is going to be 32 laps or um, 120 kilometres, effectively, which or 40 minutes, whichever one finishes first. And um, it looks like it's going to be bang on, actually, to be quite honest. Yep, I guess it's going to be uh, pretty tight. Uh, whether it will be the laps or the uh, or the time limit, because uh, guys are actually pretty fast here. That they indeed are, and um, sorry, I'm just having a mucus moment. Um, I was just thinking, actually, at the end of that race, how many people might have run a little bit wrong on fuel, <laughs> um, 
because of course this race has been extended in uh, distance compared to all the other ones because it's extra quick but everyone was good with their strategies and calculatings this one of course the um, feature race you've got a little bit more leeway with your fuel loads because you can you do refuel basically you can choose not to and just fuel the car up and then go round and do a quick tire swap or if you don't think you'll need tires um, I don't honestly know how tire wear is around this circuit because I've done very minimal testing um, Eduardo Cunada just apologizing actually to Jack Keefley about that um, little nudge um, which is quite an innocent mistake it's very similar to one that I done um, where was we last week Essington um, but yeah well, mind. yeah well this track is actually quite easy to drive but, uh, I actually had some practices here uh, it's actually the first track I am practicing for this season uh, well practicing for the whole time so well it's pretty good to see uh, it's it's pretty good to see this track here because it's a lot of a lot of difference between the other tracks uh, for sure and you're gonna you're sure gonna be a lot of different drivers uh, coming up front with this track uh, see for example Stacy Greenshaw with who did cr uh, very great in this race uh, for today because he's used to those uh, kind of like faster tracks uh, if you know what I mean. I certainly do and um, I'm just asking the drivers actually how their tyre wear is and Pablo Martinez was just saying bad um, which surprises me actually I suppose there's quite a lot of um, quite high speed um, corners where you're constantly on your um, outside tyres I suppose around those corners the left ones so maybe they get quite worked up but um, I don't think anyone will even be vaguely um, worrying about their tyres and two stopping and so on and so forth was what we've seen a few people consider in previous races um, fuel is going to play quite a big part around here as well because obviously you can pit early and go for a quick one get yourself out front and um, go from there or you can if you know you're not particularly fast tank it up with fuel wait and watch for everyone else to crash into the anti-cuts at the club chicane and um uh, finish at the end of the race, I guess. Uh, hmm. but at the end of the race. <laughs> uh, quite lovely. Lovely, logically, you're going to finish, so. <laughs> and just a quick shout out, actually, for Scott Giuliano, who's just said he'd like to dedicate that ring to his dad, who's just found out he is about two months left with to live with stage four lung cancer. So, a uh, very, very bad news there for Scott Giuliano. Um, and of course our thoughts and feelings are with you and your family and um, that's a really nice fitting tribute there Scott indeed he's going to be per hour and um, if you ever need anyone to talk to um, having been through a severely, relatively similar situation myself Scott you're more than welcome to come and chat to me my friend but in the efforts of everyone else, we do have a race to go on for, and we shall let's dedicate the whole weekend actually to Scott's father. That's quite nice. And um, we've just got about 20 seconds left to go until we move forward to qualifying for our sprint race. Uh, and it's our feature race, I guess, even. That's the one. That w They were so quick around that track, I didn't know whether I was coming or going. <laughs> Bit like Noah's Ark, they was all going two by two. So, any particular um, come back, Marco? <laughs> if you got any particular um, hints, tips, or advice for the feature race, any particular winners you think you might predict, Marco? Uh, well, I actually, just left for a hot dog. So, uh, well. Uh I'm trying to see if I can, if we can get Scott Giuliano back up front because he deserves it. But it's just kind of emotional state and stuff like that. He actually, if if he he declared this, and with this state of mind, if I would be him, I wouldn't be driving in front because uh, even if I was that fast, I mean, uh, I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, lots of lots of respect for him 
and I'd love to see him win again uh, as there's respect and tribute to his uh, father. Absolutely. And here we are. Just moving forward to the qualifying session. Ten minutes of high octane action. Okay, and I'm uh, missing it because I'm watching it. Wait, hot dog. But um, I'll be uh, hot the dogs. TV. Yeah, I'm hot, uh, hot dog. Um, I actually left the server. <laughs> Rubbish. You with your hot dog. I've, what do I, I get? I, couscous. I, Rubbish. I, I kicked myself out. Anyway, everyone's gearing up for Quali, and now you can see actually Scott Giuliano, man of the moment, our winner from the sprint race, along with Emmanuel Gaxella, RP McMurphy, Martin Palmer, and I think that was Pablo Martinez just in the background, all jumping onto the circuit. And um, I think it's only right that we stay with Scott Giuliano actually, because he was our race one winner. And um, although Emmanuel Gaxella is normally, um, he's down in P19 currently at the moment. Um, or showing on our screens, P19, no one's actually completed a lap yet. And, um, oh, excuse me. They come out onto the formation lap, the Axella, they're just running behind, um, also one of our dark horses for the race, although he was looking decidedly sheepish. And, um, he's actually got RP McMurphy hustling him, and RP McMurphy doesn't normally hustle many people. Um, he's quite a good faithful driver, towards the back of the field. And uh, one person that I secretly cheer for in my 20 laps, or 20,000 laps of sleep that I get. So here comes Scott Giuliano, just down the back straight, into the last couple of corners. I do apologise if my voice dies, because I've got, it's not a cold, it's called man flu. Scott Giuliano pops over the final curves and goes off for his quality lap. Across the line he goes and round into turn one there. Avoid the curves because those curves just push you out wide. Down into the next complex of corners. The first one of those being a certain Campbell. Then across into Cobb and you've got to watch your exit from that because if you don't exit nicely out of that one it will affect you all the way round to the very end of the lap. There's round Seagrave and a no ball coming up for Scott Giuliano. And uh, there you go, just nudging the curves ever so slightly. You've got to try and take the line of least resistance and the one that takes the least kind of driving um, mileage, for want of a better word. <coughs> and uh, Scott Giuliano actually using quite a lot of the track. I think I'd want to, mind you, I can't really say anything, I'm rubbish, but I'd want to take a much tighter line than that because it would mean you cover less ground, um, if providing you can keep it fast enough, obviously. And down into the final set of corners, into the club chicane, where it can all go horribly wrong, as you saw for plenty of other cars earlier. And Giuliano humping over the back, the curbs. One, two, three. There's a wheel in the track. That's not good a sign. Giuliano crosses the line to take provisional pole with a 114.536. So that was faster than he did in Q1 for the sprint race. Gexella goes second with a 115.8. Martin Jones third. Uh, R.P. McMurphy down to fifth, and the time's coming thick and fast already. And I think Martin Palm was the man who crashed out in that chicane, because he is already in the pits and he's only completed one lap. Even and Glacius currently showing P12, now pops up into P2. So he's just finished his lap, uh, moves into second, Pablo Martinez into third. Marcos Rodriguez now down to fourth position. Ibrahim Patel in P23 is currently out on a hot lap. He grabbed tenth position in the uh, sprint race. He hops over the curbs. Nicely done, like a little ballerina. And across the line he goes into P5. So that's a much better effort there by Ibrahim Patel. Just a second off the provisional pole time. Oh no! But he presses escape and therefore gets himself disqualified. You should remember that from the last time, Ibrahim. Although he didn't actually complete his lap last time, did he? <laughs> no, I guess not. No, uh, he crashed the wall last mm. time. Mm. Naughty, naughty, slappy monkey. As uh, the cars come into the pits, let's see who be out on a lap that is of the hot variety. 
uh, Mark Jones actually down in P19 for a duo racing team BMW is out on his hot lap currently at the moment and he's just coming down the back straight into the club chicane finale <laughs> make sure that he doesn't actually conk it into the anti-cuts oh I just heard someone you can see someone they're doing it and the wheel bounces off of Mark Jones's car and um, well that was a lucky escape there because if that car had been left on the middle of the circuit it would have bugged him right up but Mark Jones comes in P4 there so that was a good um, job there by him indeed let's jump to P15 for Jack Keithley and he is just exiting the first section of corners and he's going out onto the back section of the track Freddie Fuller's popped into third position just out of your screens but Jack Keithley for DHR Simcraft is our championship leader so he is the man deserving of our attention currently at the moment and um, here he comes ooh a little bit too much of the kerb and uh, just about holding it onto the racing line that's pretty much what Martin Palm done on the start of the f uh, sprint race and just went too wide onto the um, grass and then slip back down to about 6th or 7th position. Jack Keefley able to keep it all together and here he comes down in do the club chicane. Let's see what danger awaits him here. Oh it's Eduardo Cunyada there making a bit of a boo-boo in front of him but he's already completed his lap so I don't know what he's up to. Jack Keefley crosses the line and third on the grid half a second off of Scott Giuliano who really does seem to be on fire this afternoon or this evening maybe extra chargings going on for him let's see who else is on a lap Moses Rondon is just completing his so I'll just tell you his time before we find the next guy he pops into fifth with a 115-121 let's take a look at uh, well the only man that's actually out on a hot lap even Pons down in 19th wasn't able to get himself sorted out in the um, sprint race he had a computer issue and had to leave just before quali oh and that's not quite the way to go around over that curb a little bit too aggressive there by Ivan but um, this is about his first lap that he's had in the last hour to actually go out and explore the track so it's a little bit like a magical mystery tour or the independent he's in a Lexus as well which um, only really Moses Rondon and Marcus Rodriguez appear to be making work round here at the moment uh, but he's taking a much tighter line than a lot of other people around the Goodwood and um, the far back uh, corners let's see where this pops him <clears throat> into the club chicane nice and early hitting Oh, quite airborne there but still able to guide his missile through across the line he pops and where will this put him? 6th position there once again half a second down so even Pons there very aggressive in the early part of the lap but it appears to have worked fantastic stuff there by even um, Jeffrey Ruskus has just popped in as ninth as well and I think that just leaves Randu Muru left as the only man who's actually got to complete a lap and uh, here he comes in P20 to start it off now for the Batmarker Brigade team although he's not running in the, our team lever is probably because all your eyes are still bleeding from last week um, but just while Randu does his lap and it's looking quite tidy at the moment Martin Palm, Alex Sawchuk and both Patels have failed to actually complete their well Ibrahim Patel did complete his lap and got himself disqualified so those are the cars that you saw bits and bobs of flying about in those chicanes and uh, that's quite a big deal actually for Martin Palm because he of course is one of our top guys and um, he won't be particularly impressed with himself playing buckaroo with his car as we see Ron Nomura was actually uh down on the first sector actually as I'm saying with the PSR TV broadcast that's good to know because I don't actually have sector times at all but here he comes down into the club chicane let's see what Mr. Muru can do it don't know where his brother is actually Runo he's obviously having a break ooh just missed the final and he cut there across the line he doth come and he did be moving into second position there so a 114.677 way go Randu sorry I'm a little bit biased there 
He is one of my guys. Now, don't press escape. <laughs> That's a team order. Don't do it. But Scott Giuliano, once again, fantastic effort by the... <laughs> no, I know he can't hear me, but never mind. Like, for all the will in the world, don't press escape. I'm sending love. Uh, I'm channeling my energies, all my snotty energies, across the airwaves. Well, let's all follow him to see if he does not... It's, it's 40 seconds left, so uh, it's, it's about us to see if he or if he does not pit. <laughs> hmm, and quite interestingly, Martin Palm, down in P21, how did that one work out? He's now actually out on a hot lap. I wonder if he crashed before he actually got anywhere. Or if he didn't crash at all, and it was just my timing screens going a bit cadoodle. But he's in P21, and he's the last man to do a lap. So let's follow, follow him around in a digital racing team. I was getting a little bit, um, I was going to say impotent. I've forgotten what the word I was going to say. That'll do. Ask my exes. I'm sure they all say the same. And, uh, Oh, Martin Palm actually going very slowly there. What is going on with Martin Palm? You know, he's pressed escape. I think he... Ah, I don't think he realised that he'd actually complete, he'd clocked up a lap and then when he's probably gone round to go again, it's not worked. So in amongst that confusion... Oh, Lauren Evanessi has just left the game. Scott Giuliano has taken pole position for ISI Racing Team. Fantastic effort by him. Randy Muru second. And those two were way clear from uh, the rest of the field. Ethan and Glacius third for Kraken Motorsports. Daniel Beck once again up there for fourth uh, for Ajia. Jack Keefley fifth. Moses Frondon sixth. Ethan Pons a fantastic seven there. Uh, Freddie Fuller eight. Let's hope his connection and ping do a little bit better this time out. Uh, Pablo Martinez, 9, much better for the um, amiable job. 10th place, I don't mean nut job, but um, his driving is quite fun to watch. Uh, Jeffrey Ruskus in 10, Mark Jones, 11, Marcos Rodriguez, Stacey Greenshaw, Simon Meluish, Emmanuel Gexella, Eduardo Cunada, Martin Jones, RP McMurphy, then the non watchers, Martin Palm, Alex Sawchuk, uh, Mohamed Patel, and Ibrahim Patel and Lauren Evanesi. Well, actually, to see, I just see if I get when I came in the room uh, on the chat, I saw that uh, I guess uh, Martin Palm is actually testing, was actually testing how fast he was, actually. So he tested, he's gone out for his first lap, he's gone out for his warm up lap, and he then took his. Uh, I, what's supposed to be his out lap as, as a quick lap and he took it uh, to see what the sector time is so that's uh, quite interesting to see there to see if we can measure with the rest of the guys in front yeah just to co confirm Martin Palm did smack the anti-cuts on his out lap so that's why I thought it showed as one lap registered, and that's probably why he thought he might try and have a little go again. Um, although Marco has also just cleared that one up for us as well. Our nifty little pit lane reporter. A couple of minutes left, so uh, don't forget, you can come and join us over at rfgrc.co.uk, where we have not only the GRC League itself, which you can aspire to, once you've completed 20 races in our Cup series, which run during the week, very easy to do. If I can do it, anyone can, because I'm about as um, sim racing dyslexic as a chimp on heat. So, so you're not the only one. Um, hop on down and get yourself registered. It's a great community. Oh! You can go. I, you eat your banana. You're the biggest chimp going. What? Was that against anyway. me? <laughs> no, no, Marco. Don't worry. Anyway, so we just got a couple of minutes left for warm up, and actually, there's a bit of a collision going on in the pit lane between Eduardo Cunada and someone else. So, Eduardo finds himself in all the wrong places today. And, um,. Scott Giuliano actually saying that he'd never led, he'd never actually led a pace lap before, so that must mean that was his first pole position. So it's all going off for Scott Giuliano today. 
yes indeed, and he must be happy because he's probably trying his uh, other's best as he's con maybe concentrating or concentrating even too hard uh, to forget his personal life. But uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely great to see this kind of racing from uh, Scott. Uh, really, uh, he really, he really deserves this. Uh, this uh, the kind of work he puts into this and all stuff like that. So uh, yeah, he, I, I would give him the uh, second race win. Uh, if I could choose it. Unfortunately, Marco, there's about 23 other guys, if not maybe a smidge more, no, 22, get your maths right, that would, in principle, like to say, OK, but not really. <laughs> they all want that little victory as well. Um, known more so probably than Jack Keefley or uh, a certain Jeffrey Ruskus who came into this race just one point separating them in a championship. Jeff Keefley leading with 248 and Jeffrey Ruskus second with 247. Well, Emmanuel Gaxella of third with 211. Sorry, Marco. Well, let's just be. Let's just be evil for a part and let's say they have 40 minutes to come up with a solution to get them that first place. So, let's see how hard they will fight for it. Because this is a fighter track, of course. Yes, commentator's curse indeed. We, we've we just buggered everyone, really, to be honest. Anyway, not too long to go now. You have to listen to us wrap it in on for too much longer. Just about five seconds left till the warm-up is over. Don't forget, of course, you can come and join us next Monday where we roll reverse it and we'll all be out on the track doing our worst and you'll be joined in the commentary booth probably by... Uh, Mike Wrightston, I believe, and um, a certain Jack Nichols, if he's about as well. Yes, indeed. Hey, where are we commentating as well? I check it out. A lovely book of person to commentate. Okay. Um, the other thing that I've noticed actually with this track, um, which might come up a little bit later, um, is that the pit entrance is really awkward around this circuit because it's not where you'd necessarily think your pit entrance would be because it's kind of the wrong side of the track and um, yeah. you have to exit that I mean that club chicane is is a bugger enough at the moment but you have to exit it at such a specific way to get into the pits I think that could cause a little bit of problem um, and also um, there seems to be quite a lot of pit lane sharing, um, where you're actually sharing the same pit garage. Of course, if you come in at exactly the same time as that other person, you'll end up playing um, Tesco Q, and it's all self-service it? from here on in. Yep, and it, and it, and uh, well, as well uh, for entering the pits, uh, the guys who are pitting do need to put their headlights on. Uh, about two, at least two corners ahead. So, I don't, I don't think that will be too much of a problem. At the end of the line, uh, any, everyone gets to pit. So, uh, I don't think they're they're worrying too much uh, with fighting the guys and chicane uh, when they are having their headlights on or something. I guess. Let's hope they just don't bump into each other when someone is making a pit stop. Pit stop. Oh well. We should keep our fingers crossed that everyone goes well. Best of luck again for everybody. And, um. Attention, you're all the non essential personnel in the grid now. There's that famous R Factor phrase. I don't know what will happen when R Factor 2 comes out and we don't get that. Oh, I hope, I hope we will get some, like, uh, some woman saying that or something. Yeah. Marco. All non-essential uh, personnel, please get out of the line of the grid. She says, all husky with her nurse's uniform on, Marco, stop it. Anyway, Scott Giuliano will be leading this round in the pole position for this 32 lap or 40 minute race. And he's in ISI racing team. Along, he's in a BMW as well. Uh, second on the grid, Brandy Muru for back market brigade, also in the BMW. Third on the grid, Even and Glacius. He's for Kraken Motorsports in the Cadillac. Uh, fourth on the grid is Daniel Beck again. Adura Racing, BMW. 
fifth um, on the grid is Jack Keefley in the DHR Simcraft. Uh, Moses Rondon, sixth position for Stigline TRA Espana. He's a top Lexus man today. And just behind him is an independent, even Pons in seventh, also in a Lexus. So that'd be good for them. Second independent, so independent row four, is Freddie Fuller in the Cadillac. Pablo Martinez, nine for Abu Dhabi Motorsports. And Jeffrey Ruskus rounds out the top ten for 05 Motorsports in the Cadillac. And well, uh, as an 11th place is covered by uh, Mark Jones and the Adieu Racing Team uh, BMW. Uh, for 12th place, we have Marcos Rodriguez for Tomension Racing uh, in Alexis. Ibrahim Patel uh, in the DHR Apex for uh, with a BMW. Uh, we have Stacy Greenshaw uh, with the BMW on the 14th place. Simon Melvish, uh, top running on the top 15 with the ERK Tim Templar of BMW. Very interesting to see him there. Uh, Emmanuel Gagzella, uh, 16 for the BMW, uh, the other uh, uh, KR3W. Then we have Eduardo Canada on the 17th place with the Kraken Motorsports Cadillac. Uh, Martin Jones with the Astra Courtesy Car. Uh, it's pretty uh, interesting to see how that runs out with the Astra there on the 18th place. R.P. McMurphy on the BMW uh, for EK, ERK Templars on a 19th place. Uh, Michael Murphy on uh, 20th with Adu Racing Team with the BMW again. Uh, Mohamed Patel uh, with the DHR BMW on 21st. Uh, on 22nd we have Alex Sauchuk uh, from Stigline Northern Ice on the Lexus. Then and Martin... Uh, oh! Sorry to interrupt you Marco, we're gonna go, 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 go in a second. Rough! Martin Palm rounded off the grid by the way, and look at even Iglesias getting a cracker of a start. To come and take off Scott Giuliano down into turn one, rounding outside, can Scott hold it on? Ooh, just about side by side with Iglesias, he made a cooker of a getaway there and Inglesius noses ahead to take the lead is he down into the second turn he doesn't have the inside line Julian Giuliano cuts right across Daniel pushed Pablo Martinez through into third position Giuliano running wide out of that complex and ooh is that Giuliano off no he's not he's held that very very well there Excella. going out of Seagate Excella and Greenshaw off all uh -oh. coming together there yeah, a little coming together at the back there. Stacey Green saw Alex saw Chuck involved in that as well, I believe. But up front, even Iglesias leads the Grand Prix from Daniel Beck in second, Scott Giuliano third. Randy Murray slipped down to fourth from second on the grid with uh, even Pons up to fifth. That's a good start by Giuliano him as well. <clears throat> and Giuliano coming around the outside, a little bit too much on the curb there, so that will both, well, upset the car. And look at Randy Murray come flying up into the inside, Muru's going to have that down into the chicane Giuliano, is he going to think better of it and back out, yes he is, Muru up into third place, Giuliano from first to fourth in one lap, even Pons five, Jack Keefley six, Rondon and Martinez, Ruskus and Rodriguez round out the top ten, Mellowish up to a fantastic 11th off the line there good recovery from him, hoping for better and Freddie Fuller, looks like his car is actually not pinging all over the track, is currently in uh, 11th Alex Sorchuk there is our last runner. He's quite a way off the back of everyone else. Uh, but here we are, battle for second and third and fourth. Daniel Beck, Randy Muru and Scott Giuliano. Muru there fancying a bit of slipstream action down the back, I think. Yep, as Muru gets on back. Nope, it's not going to work out. Uh, Giuliano is going to try again now, I guess. Uh, and even Pugs is getting in as well. Indeed. And here we go. What's Randy Murray going to do in third position on Daniel Beck? This is the last turn before they have to pull out and go for the club chicane. And Murray's got to have eyes in the front and back of his head because Giuliano's fancying a go to. And it's Scott Giuliano who's using a double slipstream action. And three wide into that chicane is not going to work. They've got to kind of get some kind of order and pattern 
Giuliano and Muru, ooh, barging each other through there just to make sure Giuliano has the position just for now. Muru trying to go on the attack, even Pons there. Fancy in a nose past the pair of them, giving Giuliano a little bit of love tap from behind. Jack Keithley just sitting watching these lot go at it, hammer and tongs behind, just waiting for them all to collect each other and take each other off. This all allowing even Iglesias to raise a 1.3 second advantage on lap 2 of 32. So it's all looking very good for even up front. But the battle's raging hard and fast behind as um, someone is not going the right way. It's Ibrahim Patel down in 14th, well now 15th position, but he's back on track now, albeit going a little bit slower than everyone else. So, back up onto the front, let's look at P5, because that's Randy Muru versus Jack Keefley, and Jack Keefley wants to put another car between himself and Jeffrey Ruskus, and that is indeed what he's done before they even get there, although Randy Muru is close enough to do the switcheroo, back up down into the club chicane, Jeff Jack Keefley places his car in the middle of the circuit, then pulls out to the outside line, because that gives you the best part of the uh, corner for the next line Muru though takes the position back with relative ease Muru doesn't have any ooh very close there on the anti-cuts with both Muru and Keefley Muru has no extra um, weight to carry whereas Keefley's got half a herd hanging on to him as we have the battle for second place uh, with Scott Beck right in front of Giuliano Giuliano planning an attack on Scott Beck and he's doing it he's doing it he's getting that no he's not getting it there uh, going to try again on the straights. Uh, let's see if he can pull it off there. Yeah, Daniel Beck got in too hot into two and that upset his rhythm into three and four. He just about held it off there. But Scott Giuliano is like he's looking at his prey thinking I'll have some of that definitely. Eduardo Cunada is back in the pits again on lap three of 32. So once again a re another race to forget for Eduardo. But Scott Giuliano is keeping himself very much in the thick of the action into the slipstream getting sucked right up onto the rear end of Daniel Beck pulls out he's gonna have the inside line but does he have better braking skills Daniel Beck is mighty on those brakes Scott Giuliano is mightier and yoinks the position oh, very close there with even puns as well joining onto the back of this duo that's got Giuliano is through 1.6 seconds is the advantage he's got to close on even and Glazius but he'll be as dragging he Daniel closing. Beck. Mm, he is. As da he's going to be dragging Daniel Beck and even Pons along with him. Randy Murray is five. Keefley six. Ruska seven. Martinez eight. Simon Mellowish is up into a superb ninth position. As um, nine, he's, he's uh, been attacked by Freddie Fuller. Uh, this is the battle over P9 and 10. And Freddie Fuller there tried to go up the inside into two and just smacked Mellowish's side there. It's a bit of an ambitious move there by Fuller, but why not have a go? And uh, that's pushed him back down. Uh, find. Uh, he just made a mistake there, somewhere. He just actually made a brake mistake or something. He, he, I saw just some smoke coming off the, his tires. So, and uh, Giuliano actually improving time on him. And Daniel Beck has made a mistake and dropped down to 7th position. I didn't see quite what happened. I'm just... Oh! He spun all on his own. Um, down in... I think that was Goodwood. He just put two uh, wheels on the grass, spun round, and that let Randy Muru, uh, Jack Keefley and Jeffrey Ruskus through. And Daniel Beck now suddenly finds himself in 7th, um, having to stop the advances of Pablo Martinez. As uh, Freddie Fuller and Simon Mellowish in the battle for 9 and 10 have re-swapped back positions again. Um, and that's your top battle actually on track, P9 and 10. Freddie Fuller versus Simon Mellowish. Mellowish fancying to redo what Fuller couldn't do down into turn 2. Fuller closes the door. And Mellowish there has got the inside line for free. But um, trying to mount those curves is not always the fastest way um, when you're trying to play on an attack. But he's straight into the slipstream in that English Racing Knight Templars cars. And that's going to pan him quite nicely. The BMW, of course, not too shabby on the straight line speed. As Moses Rondon has left the game, he's crashed out on lap 4 of uh, 32. So he's our first retirement there, Moses Rondon. Shame, he was doing quite well in the uh, opening race. As I'm watching what's happening with uh, Iglesias so, and Giuliano. 
That's from Juliana Gozen with the Apple and Mike Iglesias. Yep, just a of time when they do get uh, caught in the battle. Uh, yeah, yeah Juliana is. In a uh, uh, drag range for uh, Iglesias already. Certainly is. I don't think that'll be too long before they're going to be he he heated up. Uh, quick progress report on Martin Palm. He's just overtaken Mohamed Patel for 13th and 14th position. We'll come to a little bit of that later because um, I'm in agreement with you, Mark. I think Scott Giuliano will be very much onto even and Glacius by the end of this lap. And look at how much clo faster he is. Oh, is he too fast there? Just about missing the grass around the back corner Scott Giuliano in P2 even Pons there you can see flashing around behind them in P3 um, so it's Cadillac, BMW and Lexus um, to three different manufacturers in the top three positions and uh, Giuliano there made a bit of a mess of that back corner because that has dropped him back so that will be that for another lap let's see what else we've got going on the battle for 12th, 13th and 14th Mark Jones, Martin Palmer, Mohamed Patel and Martin Palmer is fancying a nose at Mark Jones down into club and Mohamed Patel wants the pair of them he's got room for three into that corner there's barely enough room for one Martin Palm has a position oh there's something kicking off there there's tyres and everything in the walls oh it's Simon Mellowish oh no 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 it's Simon Mellowish let me just see what happened Okay, they just watching this on the replay while you look at the carnage. Uh, ooh, it starts off actually with um, they're lapping Ibrahim Patel, who's already made a mistake before they get there. RP McMurphy is also off, so something's happened before Simon Mellowish gets there. Pablo Martinez nearly clouts the wall. Simon Mellowish does, and um, everyone else has to take avoiding action. Mellowish is the only actual retirement. RP McMurphy will be a retirement. He's only got three wheels. Ibrahim Patel is still running, but it's two laps down. Yep, so we have uh, Giuliano right into the back of Iglesias. And I guess Iglesias is going to pit. I guess Iglesias is going to make a pit stop because he just flashed his lights. Yeah, that was a strange one. But Giuliano takes the lead. Ooh, very close with the anti-cuts there, Giuliano. Oh. Iglesias flies to Giuliano, and he actually let Giuliano pass. Hmm. Which is very strange, because Giuliano or Iglesias didn't do anything wrong to uh, Giuliano. No, they've not exactly been close racing with each other, have they? So, um... I went and this has been something that, like a nudge or something that we've seen that we didn't catch ourselves because we've been busy looking at all the frantic action going on behind. But uh, we should watch that with bated breath well, and I'm, see I'm, what Inglesias wants to do. I'm busy watching these again, I guess. I'm busy, I'm busy watching this from the start. But they haven't actually touched uh, unless it should be in the first few laps. But I guess uh, I don't think he's going to take consequences for that on lap uh, 8 or something. Uh, if, if there would be consequences. Uh, Iglesias would have let him pass already. As uh, Giuliano makes his, uh, is going to make his pit stop this this lap. Uh, so uh, see if Giuliano is uh, actually going to leapfrog him too. Definitely. And look at the way Iglesias closes on to the back. So Giuliano pops into the pits. Uh, and Glacius continues on. Even Glacius is normally one of those guys that actually is one of the last two pit. So maybe he just wasn't going to be prepared to put up a battle. As uh, RP McMurphy has now finally given up trying to get his three-wheeled car out of the grass. Uh, Martin Jones, we've also seen retire off your screens as well. Um, although that wasn't at, didn't actually look like a crash. It looks more like a disconnection. Um, Are you just playing already? Yeah, Giuliano did not take tyres, so that is quite interesting. Let's see where he's just rejoined back on well, again. 14th place. To be honest, I, mean, I think he did take tyres, but he didn't, didn't take fuel. Because tyres takes you exact 10 seconds most of the time. Most of the time. Oh, okay. No worries. We shall soon find out. We shall leave that to the viewers because I've got no goggles on. So Even and Glacius currently leads by 1.1 seconds from Even Pons, who's doing a fantastic job in second place, actually. Hats off to the Ponster. Randy Murray currently in third. Jack Keefley's in four. 
Jeffrey Ruskus 5, Daniel Beck 6, he's 10 seconds down from the leader. Pablo Martinez is in 7, Freddie Fuller's in 8th and he's got Marcus Rodriguez alongside. This is the best battle on track to watch. Fuller's trying to go down on Martinez and trying to hold off Rodriguez all at the same time and that looks like Martin Palm and Mohamed Patel and they've got Daniel Beck who's just had a butcher of the final chicane. Six cars! all desperately trying to get down the straight together fantastic action by the GRC group and there you can see Marcos Rodriguez there overtakes Daniel Beck for 8th and ninth position Martin Palm is fancying a nose down Beck as well into 2 is that going to happen? Yes it is Daniel Beck there well off the racing line Mohamed Patel gets through as well so gives Palm a smack Palm runs Patel off the line but Patel has the inside line for the next one and out of sea back goes they come back comes across yep yeah. And Martin Palm finds himself doubled out by there then um, and down into 11th position. But fantastic racing from them. Just ahead, uh, Rodriguez, uh, Fuller and Martinez are all doing exactly the same stuff. But let's see what Martin Palm can do because we've seen him do all kinds of shenanigans in previous races. Daniel Beck having a look at Mohamed. But can't do it. And that is going to allow Martin Palm the chance to pick off Beck down into the club chicane but I think he's not going to bother with it it's like he's pulled off and eased off early and that's because Beck is busy playing with Mohammed. oh Beck they very interesting line into <laughs> that chicane let's pet palm back through and actually is now going to be attacked by Mark Jones down the straight um, so not good stuff at all there Stacey Greenshaw is actually a lap down and is not involved in that battle but plenty of action up and down the field interestingly enough actually even Pons is now within a second of Even and Glazius for the lead so to ev the two Evens or Ivans are um, about to have Clash of the Titans I think at the front yeah, I'm seeing uh, 22 seconds behind on uh 22 seconds behind on um, Ivan Iglesias, uh, which should have to go overtake him with the pistols. Uh, also, um, gained time on Iglesias again, even with a new set of tires or a new uh, or a refuel uh, event. So, just to. I'm watching the battle between. 11th and 12th and that is Mark Jones and Daniel Beck and Daniel Beck retakes Mark Jones I was about to say Mark Jones took that position but now Daniel Beck has it back the problem is is that all these are busy battling each other they're about to um, they're all holding each other up enough so that they're actually about to run into Scott Giuliano who's going to be hit by traffic um, he's already had to put a pass I think on Emmanuel Gaxella who is strangely off the pace in 40 position although he does have a ton of um, wonderful uh, Wasamajig weight on so that is probably explaining most of his lack of pace and uh, no one looking like they're coming into the pits at the moment Martin Palm then in 10th position he's just going past Freddie Fuller and Freddie Fuller actually going onto the grass there so not quite sure what that tactic was unless he was just trying to get out of the way of Martin Palm but that's run footed Fuller now in 10th place it's about to be attacked by Daniel Beck down the straight and um, Freddie Fuller thankfully his two Krakenwood spots cars uh, Evan Iglesias and Eduardo Canada if they're now going to uh, slipstream or bumpstream uh, each other uh, through the whole section of the track so let's see about how that comes up as long as Kenyatta doesn't end up bumping people off which was what he accidentally done while being lapped beforehand as you saw Freddie Fuller there get overtaken by Daniel Beck uh, no one pitted that time by so status quo as you are even in Glaze is still leading from even Pons although um, well yeah, I guess nothing is worse than the smack which I remember which uh, than the smack that uh, Al Ghazari did yesterday on uh, Chantop was it? <laughs> yeah, that was a bit dozy, I have to say. Although he did do a good drive to 10th. But um, Inglesius there has kept teammate Eduardo Cunyard actually in between himself and even Pons for the time being. And uh, neither of them look like they're pitting this time by. So 
they shall continue on, but Eduardo Cunada is going to have to get out of the way sooner or later from Even Pons. Even Pons pops into the pits. He didn't turn his headlights on. Naughty, naughty, slappy, wristy. But Even Pons is in from second position, and uh, that is going to pop him down the order. I'll be interested to see where he comes out in relation to Giuliano, because Scott Giuliano is now busy, all being overtaken by Emmanuel Gaxella in 13th and 14th position, actually. Oh, Gaxella! A smack Giuliano! Giuliano's gone off into the anti-cuts. He drives through the gap in between there. Giuliano, currently 12th position. Uh, Freddie Fuller was involved in that as well. Freddie Fuller's car smashed to bits, um, although he is limping it back into the pits. And... Uh, Giuliano has got out ahead of even Pons actually by quite a convincing margin. So Scott Giuliano may have made a very good decision to pit early and um, try and keep everything as is. Freddie Fuller though in the pits to repair damage. And there's only uh, 19 cars left running. So well, to see, he, he just drove between two of the anticus. He didn't hit any of them. Just quite nice aiming there. Lovely. You could do that for some of your archery, Marco, as Evil Iglesias comes around to finish off another lap, and he's not pitting, and he's still got teammate Kenyada right behind him. I'd be a bit annoyed. Actually, I'd almost... I think they are trying to bump it. Yeah, Kenyada is actually bumping Iglesias along, so they've obviously taken... Oh! But that's one bump too many there, Eduardo! <laughs> and they were both off onto the grass there. And um, I think I would want to end that tactic now, actually, if I was even. Because, um, yes, it does give you extra time, but my goodness, isn't it risky? And um, risks while you're leading the race um, with relative comfort comfortity at the moment, um, and at least on for second place, is... Um, going to be quite interesting and Cunyada now drops back slightly so maybe that's into that let's take a look at positions six uh, no we're not seven eight and nine Pablo Martinez Daniel Beck and Martin Palm these three are in a good little battle and Pablo Martinez has had a relatively quiet evening's worth of racing um, in terms of results but he's now sitting P7 and has busy got Beck and Palm all over his rear and uh, trying every which way but loose to get through and Beck I think is about to try the switch across to take the inside line down into the corner Pablo cuts across as he's perfectly entitled to do and that is going to allow Martin Palm to have a nose down into the chicane potentially no nope. Palm gets out of it because Daniel Beck once again last of the late breakers into club chicane take seventh position from Pablo Martinez who didn't actually resist too much and very well to miss that anti-cut there actually as uh, Randon Muru has been into the pits and is just exiting again and Muru definitely has not taken something because Muru has exited the pits in sixth position and Donkey ahead of Scott Giuliano and therefore potentially into the lead of this Grand Prix as Emmanuel Gaxella has retired from the race with a DNF so that looks like a disconnection from Emmanuel so yes, it's it's not, uh, Emmanuel was right at the back it's quickly just on. yeah unfortunate there for Emmanuel but Randy Muru there, something quite key strategically there has happened. He obviously thinks that he can not need to change tyres and if he fooled himself up for the whole race and it's just a quick stop and get back out again, he's immediately in sixth position and is now under attack by Daniel Beck who of course has passed uh, Pablo Martinez and Martin Palm you just saw behind has just gone past Martinez as well. What can Beck do on Randu? Down into the chicane, Beck having to go the outside Randy making him go the long way around and that's not going to work for Daniel but uh, Muru has four seconds advantage over Scott Giuliano um, and those two are our two leaders who have definitely pitted Daniel Beck pops into the pits as does Pablo Martinez in 9 and 10 position Scott Giuliano leapfrogs the pair of those and uh, those two I'm sure will be battle resumed very shortly so just 18 runners now remaining with Ibrahim Patel the only man two laps down still running in last let's take a look at the battle for fourth and fifth positions now actually with Marcos Rodriguez and Mohamed Patel they're 20 seconds off the leader which is currently even in Glacius but uh, that doesn't matter a jot if you're running four and five admittedly it's pit stop affected at the moment but they're both running fantastic races 
and both actually still on the track. Neither of them, I don't think... Well, Mohamed Patel certainly didn't finish the sprint race. And um, he's fancying a little nose through. It's BMW versus Lexus down into the club chicane. And the BMW there struggling to get around the Lexus. There's uh, a yeah, Jack well. Key. The BMW is quite unstable on the braking on that last club corner, so uh, yeah, it's either slide through or go through, so it's quite uncomfortable to go through that last corner as he hits Rodriguez off the line. Ooh, that was unfortunate. Mohammed does take as the position. I don't have sounds on, Simon, and I'm watching, uh, I'm watching Patel here from uh, um, third person view or what. Roof camera, but uh, I hope that was not a uh, anti cut wall there. No, 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 it was just a, a little. In fact, Patel and Rodriguez didn't actually touch. Uh, Kid Jack Keefley has been into the pits and is back out again in eighth place, just behind Scott Giuliano, which therefore means that potentially even Inglasius now has enough of a gap. The gap is now 28 seconds, it has grown sit in the last few uh, laps actually as we're at lap 19 of 32 Even and Glacier still going round this is looking very very cushy for Even and his best um, contender now is Randu Muru who is 23 seconds off the pace but is actually pitted um, and that is bang on pretty much what it takes to do a pit stop round here but Muru has got Martin Palm behind him as well. Quick rundown of the order then on lap 19 of 32. Even Inglasius currently leads the Grand Prix uh, here at Thruxton. GRC C8, Division 1, sponsored by Ultranet Network. Second is Jeffrey Ruskus. Third is Mohamed Patel. Randy Maru is currently fourth. Martin Palm is now fifth position. Scott Giuliano is sixth. Jack Keefley is seven. Even Pons is eight. Mark Jones, nine. Marcos Rodriguez, who is just exiting the pits, is in tenth position. And he has just lost his tenth place to Alex Sorchuk, who has been busy beavering away at the back. And his car looks like he's been rolled, actually, because his top of his car looks severely mashed. So Rodriguez down to 11. Daniel Beck, 12. Pablo Martinez, 13. And a lap down Eduardo Cunada. Uh, Freddie Fuller is 15, Stacey Greenshaw is 16, uh, Ibrahim Patel is 17th because we've just lost Michael Murphy who has just crashed it out of the race. So just 12 laps to go then for this Thruxton feature race. Yep, but Ibrahim Patel is still in the race. It's very interesting to see if we're going to make a best to uh, laps to uh, uh, Michael and quite key for Randy Muru's race and Scott Giuliano is actually Martin Palmer's now peeled off into the pits. He was in fifth position when he pitted. He's now down to eighth already. That's Mark Jones in as well. Um, now I had a funny feeling that Mark Jones. Oh no, Mark Jones had just had his um, dodgy lap, hadn't he? So that's why he's further down the order than what he should be. So Martin Palm is going to rejoin in what looks like eighth position. Although Alex Sorchuk has just moved up into 8th position. Um, and I actually have to say that I don't think Alex Sorchuk has actually pitted. And that's why he's running so far up the order. Or if he did, it was down in lap 7. So he'll be doing well to try and hold on to everything in the closing laps of this race. So we're just waiting to see what Even and Glacius and Jeffrey Ruskus... And Mohamed Patel, our top three on the grid at the moment, or in the race at the moment, they're the three that are really yet to pit. Randu Muru, though, is catching Mohamed Patel, and he'll want Patel out of the way, as Patel there nearly losing it in third position. Oh, and into the pits comes Mohamed. So that has worked out well for Randu. And the strategy of Thruxton is starting to play itself out a little bit. And Mohamed Patel goes tumbling down the order. Best battle on track is currently 9th and 10th. Marcos Rodriguez versus Martin Palm. Martin Palm being forced to go round the outside way. Marcos Rodriguez hogs the inside line and Martin Palm backs out of it. But Rodriguez far too hot into that chicane. Smacks Martin Palm. Somehow the pair of them managed to get round that chicane. And <laughs> my God, 
I'm dredging these anti-cuts next week. And there's a certain double of Adura racers coming up behind Daniel Beck and Mark Jones. And, well, Daniel Beck certainly has been no stranger to all kinds of shenanigans this evening. And, uh, he'll be popping himself in as those four continue round. Even and Glacius there, as Marco just shouted out, is into the pits. And this is going to be key to see where he comes out in relation to Randy Muru. I'm watching Muru and he's not made it. He's just coming into the club chicane now. Jeffrey Ruskus takes the lead because he's yet to he's pit. He's taking a full service pit stop. He's taking a full service pit stop. 17.5 seconds. Here he comes down the pit lane. Randy Muru is coming across the start finish line. Who's going to make it out of turn one first? It's going to be Randy Muru. Randy Muru takes what is effectively the lead of the Thruxton. GRC Season 8 Division 1 Grand Prix Giuliano moves up into set what will, was third at the minute but will be effectively second. Ethan and Glacius rejoins in third but he now has fresh tyres and can start reeling in these guys ahead. I think Giuliano um, didn't take tyres I don't think and Randy Muru certainly didn't so um, interesting well, stuff interesting there. To see, interesting to see as well as Giuliano actually gained time on uh um, Muro, so that will be interesting for the end of the race. Yeah, it's all going to be heating up to a climactic finale here on PSR TV. Jeffrey Ruskus is still leading the race, although he's actually yet to pit. Um, he's currently leading by 12.6 seconds as he rounds the chicane. And does he pop into the pits this time by? Yes, he does. Lap 22 stroke 23 of the Grand Prix. That's a nice easy pit box. I'll have that one next time out. Thank you very much. But, um, and a very quick stop indeed. So no tyres, just a very quick splash and dash. Um, and he's going to be pushing himself right up the order. Randy Muru crosses the line, takes the lead of the race. Jeffrey Ruskus is going to drop behind Scott Giuliano. Where's even Inglasius? There's Ruskus coming out of the pit. So you could see Inglasius flash past behind. They're going to meet each other down at turn two. Who's going to get the position? Inglasius has far much more momentum. Yoinks through and romps into se uh, third position just ahead of Jeffrey Ruskus. And uh, that is good stuff actually for Jeffrey Ruskus because he has leapfrogged Jack Keefley and therefore says you ain't having it all your own way this weekend my friend and uh, that will eat up some of the points difference that they had in the uh, sprint race and therefore it will be very much a status quo in the championships uh, interesting to see here Scott Julian just ate a whole second out of Mur out of Muro's gap just ate a whole second out of it. Yes, he has actually. The gap's now down to 2.5 seconds. Now everyone's pitted. I'll just take you in a quick rundown of your runners and riders as Randy Muru practically stunt drives over those curbs there. He leads by was 2.5 seconds the previous split is now down to 2.4 even Glacius is 5.9 seconds down in third Jeffrey Ruskus is four he's got Jack Keefley romping into the back of him in fifth position um, and let's stay with these two because these two are actually the championship nemesis Ruskus having to go heavily defensive into two that's going to upset him for three potentially Keefley looking left looking right he's going to have to look behind him as well with even Pons who's having a fantastic scrap and a fantastic uh, feature race here in sixth about to get his fist in the action Keefley puts his nose through on the inside um, but going to be very very well Ruskus there practically leaning on Keefley's car and Keefley moves forward currently into what is fourth position but Ruskus trying desperately to hang on around the outside Pons getting in on the action too three wide Pons on the grass that's not the best for home the fastest way to do it and Keefley moves into fourth position. This has so much championship connotation, it's unbearable to see who's going to actually end up on top. Keefley four, Ruskus five, Pon six. Ruskus trying again. Down the outside, last of the late breakers, but has he braked himself too much? Yes, he has, and look, even Pon's diving through as well into fifth position. Giuliano oh. made a mistake. Giuliano made a mistake. He's right up with Pons again. And he's missing yeah, the bumper. He's yeah, he's lost, he's lost his front splitter there, and that was, um, oh, he, he's coming through the final chicane, he gets too much um, on the middle 
corner, spins across and actually smacks the um, outside catchment fence. He doesn't actually hit any of the anti-cuts, so his car might be right in terms of uh, vaguely making it home, but is immediately under the defensive from Jeffrey Ruskus, all to the musical ears of Jack Keefley, who now has got Pons and Giuliano in between himself and Ruskus uh, for the championship. And Ruskus dives past Scott Giuliano. Giuliano's car there, not really wanting to take those corners flat out. And uh, he's got 20 seconds gap over himself, between himself and Mohammed, so he can afford to cruise these last few laps if his car feels that knackered. But what a shame there for Scott Giuliano. That would have been an emotional double had he been able to have got the win in both races. Yes, that's uh, definitely sad to see, but yeah, those days can happen, of course. Uh, certainly, if you, he pushed quite a lot and is actually having to break through this corner again, uh, just because it is missing his front splitter, of course, uh, he's having to break through that, uh, those uh, fast corners or at least uh, shift back or something uh, to not go off. But yeah, it's definitely a disappointment for him, I guess. But uh, I guess he could see that problem with pushing that hard all the way down the race. So. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a bit uh, you still and see that he can finish. I think uh, that's what he's thinking about right now. Yeah, but if you want to score points, then the first thing you've got to do is get it home. Another man who's in a very similar situation is 15th placed Mark Jones, who looks like his car's been in the wars because he's missing his front bumper and a little bit from the rear it looks like as well possibly and um, he is losing a couple of seconds a lap to Eduardo Cunada who's actually um, unlapped himself in the scheme of things and is now running 14th so that's a good recovery drive from what was a pit stop on about lap 3 I think it was for Cunada so um, doing well if he can make everything last all the way to the flag on that so 86% race distance completed so far just five to go, and Randy Maru is leading for what is effectively a backmarker brigade car. I will not have it any other way. And uh, Evelyn Glacius is second for Kraken Motorsports. Two seconds behind and closing the gap. So it looks like we're getting set for a grandstand finish here with just a few laps remaining. Jack Keefley is in third, um, and he has got 1.4 seconds over even Pons in four. I don't think that battle could be quite over yet either. Jeffrey Ruskus is in fifth and maybe a little bit too far back now. Scott Giuliano is losing about eight, nine tenths of a second per sector. So sixth is really all that he will be able to muster. Mohamed Patel is seven with Mark Palm eight. And, uh, oh, Ethan and Glacius there dives through into the lead past Randy Muru. What did Muru do? What did you do? Oh, yeah, a little bit of grass action there. And um, I've told him not to mow the lawn during a race meeting and only do it in your testings. And, um, oh dear. So even Inglacius there handed back the lead from Randy Muru. And uh, Inglacius there doing the smart move. It looked like it had dropped him down the order initially because he went and changed, I think, for tyres and had a much longer stop than Rando. And Rando there running round on his rims practically is um, not able to put up a response at all to Even and Glacius who once again has shown strategic masterful skills and is sitting in a comfortable well not comfortable but is sitting with that number one next to him once again yep as we will see Jack Keatley eating uh, Rando as well if uh, Rando isn't really caring of his tyres right now I guess yeah, Randy Murray has already dropped 1.3 off of Inglacius, and there you can see Jack Keefley looming into the background, and even Pond might even fancy a little nosy pose into this one as well, as um, they come down to the club uh, mess. <laughs> the, the, the evil corner, and... Randy has dropped another nine tenths of a second off of Inglacius, and you can see Keefley there just reeling right in. I think Randy's tyres are probably on their absolute last legs. And uh, this game is going to be benefiting Jack Keefley in terms of the championship. I do harp on about it, but we are coming towards the end of the championship. Keep the attacking, keep the attacking, Muro. 
Right. Yeah, into turn two, I've not seen too many successful moves going on there. There's a. Uh, He's just gonna make it on a straight. <laughs> yeah, there's um, so much more truck. Well, he's got so much more traction coming out of all of these different corners. Uh, someone is slipping down the order as well, just off our fast screens, but we'll catch that later. As here comes Jack Keefley diving through into second. Randy Muru is there flying off to the outside. Um, not really able to attack. He'll pull in for the slipstream to try and hold off even Pons. But no, as Pons and Muru both off onto the grass and a little bit of off-road action. They should really come to the Thursday Rally GRC Cup instead for that. But Pons side by side with Muru into club and uh, Muru just cannot hold it on. He's got some definite tyre issues. Pons though... <laughs> I think we'll fancy a nose at Keefley next time by as they start lap 30 of 32. And I think we'll probably have one more lap after this one before the time limit expires. The person who was dropping down the order that I didn't see was um, Alex Sorchuk, um, who dropped to 13th. Freddie Fuller's overtaken him. Uh, and Daniel Beck has also dropped behind Marcos Rodriguez for 9th and 10th off your screens. So, the battle for second resumes. Even Inglacius now has a five second advantage over Jack Keefley. With Even Pons there tucking himself inside. And Even Pons there, I have to say, he's had a fantastic um, feature race. He wasn't able to feature at all in the sprint race because of a certain little problem with his track, which prevented him from starting. But, ooh. He doesn't need to be taking any more of that grass. <laughs> That's something I will say. Well, uh, to Japanese car, especially. Well, the Japanese car brokers are also specialized in uh, land movements. So I guess the Lexus uh, fits right to the Pentagon. <laughs> uh, he's only got one lap to do it. We're on the last lap now, lap 30. Sorry, I'm not really watching this broadcast. And uh, Jack Keefley there has really got to defend. They've got Eduardo Cunada once again showing up at the wrong opportunity, and Jack Keefley will be praying that he don't, the same incident that happened beforehand doesn't happen again, as it's exactly the same point in the track where they meet. But Eduardo um, is a very fine driver, and I'm sure he won't be out to make sure things go wrong. Mohamed Patel has overtaken Scott Giuliano for 6th and 7th position and um, Giuliano they're really suffering with his car. Um, I don't think Mohamed would actually catch him. But let's take a look at our leader because here he is coming down into the final corners. Even Iglesias, a masterful tactician not only did he take the fight off the start line to Scott Giuliano, but he then saw off Randy Muru with strategical precision. Even Iglesias wins the GRC feature whoa, 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 whoa. race at Saxon. And uh, that is that for Even Iglesias. Fantastic win spinning round. And Ivan Paul's almost hitting that wall to the almost hitting the pit wall on the start of the pit wall so uh, oh that was close yes I can always tell when something exciting's happened because it sounds like someone's attacked you <laughs> but there we go <laughs> but so Jack Keefley takes the second position from even Pons by um, one tenth of a second so that went right down to the wire but they were both not quick enough to stop even and Glacius so that be your podium and Jack Keefley therefore extends his lead ever so slightly again from Jeffrey Ruskus although the points difference between the pair of them is so close to call that anything can happen at Toise Rivieres or Toi Rivieres next time I do know a little bit of French but I'm not going to attempt it on here Jeffrey Ruskus though came home in fourth so he did minimise the damage indeed uh, Mohamed Tell came home fifth position. I think that's his best result for DHR Apex there, so he'll be delighted with that, especially after not finishing the first one. Randy Muru, sixth position. Um, unfortunate there. I think he must have had some kind of, um, well, tyre blowout or something on that last 
little bit because it was so bad. Um, he was losing like six seconds a lap. Uh, Scott Giuliano made it home just about in seventh position with that wrecked car. Martin Palm, eighth, half a minute off the pace. Marcos Rodriguez was ninth, uh, eventually seeing off Daniel Beck down to ten. Pablo Martinez, eleventh position. Freddie Fuller, twelfth. That was a shame because he was looking quite nifty early on. Alex Sorchuk almost lapped in 13th place. So um, he done well. He was running quite high up when the pit stops were all unfolding. Then one lap down, Mart Mark Jones, Eduardo Cunada, Stacey Greensall, who we saw eliminated in that early incident and lo lose a lot of time. Ibrahim Patel was two laps down. Then our retirements, Michael McMurphy, Emmanuel Gexella, Martin Jones, Simon Mellowish, R.P. McMurphy and Moses Rondom. And only Gexella and Jones don't have their own driving ability to blame for their retirements. Well, so. I'm actually already praying for next week. So if, if I see these guys, we're going to be a lot more, I guess. <laughs> Yes, I am slightly cacking myself, it has to be said. So. Well, we, we're also known that the Division 2 guys are actually just usually a bit more carnage than uh, the Div Division 1 guys. Because it's either a few things, or they get less practice, or they're less fast, or they're less experienced, so... Well, in Division 2 you can get some carnage here, I guess. Okay, so we're just going to grab a driver in, who I think was possibly one of the most unluckiest drivers here today. And here he is, the most unluckiest man today himself, Simon Mellowish, who was driving fantastically, I have to say. Um, Simon, <laughs> what happened for you? Well, um... Last minute call for these barriers put me off slightly because uh, I had a six hour race for the weekend so I didn't practice for this race. I did like a few laps after the race two weeks ago and then just left it and then come in today find out there's new barriers stuck everywhere. So your normal racing line was to kind of hop over and go for like a straight line through the middle of them? No, I was just, they're, they're a bit too close to the curb so you make, you go like a millimetre off and you hit, you hit the wall like happened to me twice. But until then, just like what you was doing at Essington, actually, you've had some pretty damn decent good pace, I have to say. So um, that's looking good for the remaining two rounds, surely. I don't know if I'll bother doing the next race, because all, all that seems to happen is people in Yankee cars driving to the back of me. Aww. Well, I won't mention names, ashamed. but I'm, I'm getting very peed off of it, to be honest. Well unfortunate but we, it would be great if you do come and uh, give us some entertainment so um, we shall have a good old giggle with you and um, thank you very much for coming in and joining us in the cast um, here we also have our current championship leader Jack Keefley in the house welcome Jack, congratulations for uh, podiums today yeah cheers mate sorry I ain't going to talk, talk much because I'm absolutely knackered but all I can say is Got lucky because there were, a lot of people made mistakes. Just I just happened not to make one really all night. And yeah, I had a close call in race one with Eduardo Canal. You probably saw on the broadcast, but oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's that's okay. I mean, it lost me two positions, but oh well, it, that's racing. And race two, yeah. To be honest, I didn't expect Jeffrey to take no tyres, but he did, and well. Pass him pretty quickly. And that was two races where you finished ahead of Jeffrey on both occasions, thus extending your championship lead. Are you still think are you I assume you're thinking championship now as you go to the last two rounds? Yeah, yeah well to be fair though, he did have a lot more weight than me, but now I'm just I'm not having much high hopes for Troy Rivienne next race because I know that's a track where you can very easily end your race just by hitting the tire wall and yeah, hopefully I can pan out to have a little wait for Watkins Glen, so, yeah. Or at least we know that those tyre barriers are actually going to be there more than 20 minutes before the start of the race. Well, I think that's about going to wrap it up. That's about all of us. Thank you very much to Simon and Jack for coming in and giving us their words of wisdom. It's always great to have drivers pop into the broadcast. Thank you once again for Marco for his invaluable input and randomness. 
And scary will, Gary, of course. I will excuse myself for my crappy sound. I will hope to fix that next time. Just see, I have some sound card issues. I actually uh, mailed my and got a fix from my sound card ma manufacturer, but it still not seems to be fixed. So I'm sorry for the crappy sounds. Naughty, naughty, spanky monkey. But thank you also to Gary Gray for his cameraman extraordinaire and, of course, to Ultranet Networks for being our sponsor for the Division 1 GRC Season 8 Touring Car World Championship Deep Breath. Join us all again for PSR TV next week on for Division 2, where you can see us all do our worst. Until then, take care of yourselves, and I'll um, see you out on track. Goodbye.